Good morning all. Now this is the last of the Shure Electronics LED drivers that I haven't so far looked at. Um, it's based on the MBI 6651 and this is their double decker 10 watt or possibly 20 watt LED driver. And it's just simply two of their 5 watt LED driver, the 5 watt 1 amp, that's the one on the right mounted on top of each other with these um, pillars and attached in parallel to each other with these three pin connectors and those three pin connectors work their way around to the power connectors and there's another three pin connector on the other side which works its way around to the LED connectors so they're literally wired in parallel. Now there was some confusion with the 5 watt 1 amp driver we found it difficult to find the elusive 5 watt 1 amp LED but it does exist here it is high power 5 watt 1000 milliamp pure white star LED so it's a single bead 5 watt 1 amp LED now if you scroll down to the technical data there is a little bit of confusion here because it says there forward current thousand milliamps forward voltage between 3.2 and 3.5 volts well if you multiply volts by amps the maximum you get is uh, 1 amp times 3.5 volts which is 3.5 watts so how this is a 5 watt LED I'm not quite sure now with the 10 watt 20 watt if you like 1.5 amp driver the double decker driver it's even more confusing because there are no single bead 10 watt LEDs, there are no single bead 20 watt LEDs, so I think we just have to completely ignore the wattage figures here and work on the amp value, 1.5 amps. Now the only LED that I've got which takes 1.5 amps is this 50 watt LED, 50 individual 1 watt uh, emitters in there in 5 columns of 10 LEDs, so will this 1.5 amp driver be able to drive a 50 watt LED. Now of course we've been here before the 1 amp driver what they call their 5 watt 1 amp driver seemed to be perfectly happy driving a 20 watt LED two rows or two columns of uh, 10 LEDs we've done that before that's fine the MBI 6651 can take up to 36 volts on the input and with that LED having 10 LEDs in series, it needs about 33 or 34 on the output. It's all a bit tight, but it does work, and the MBI 6651 doesn't show any signs of overheating. So there's the driver attached to the 50 watt LED. Now there's a very narrow range of voltage we can put into the driver now in order to get the 33, 34 volts out, but not to exceed the maximum 36 volts in and that is we have to feed this thing with exactly 36 volts. So here's the boost converter. I've got 12 volts going in. That's coming from my battery system outside. That's showing exactly 12 volts at the moment. Um, now I am going to set a current limit, but it's way above the 1.5 amps that the Shure Electronics driver will limit at. So I'm going to limit this at 2, so it shouldn't go into current limit. And let's switch on our monitor volts. Now remember this boost converter has a very slow voltage ramp up so it takes a while for the LED to start coming on but there it goes. Let's monitor current. So it's overshot the amps a bit but that's dropped back. The boost converter is in constant voltage, that's the green light and it has settled at about 1.5 amps and that all seems to be working. Now another thing I wanted to try was the uh, enable inputs. I've got a wire here. I'm going to put it to ground. So by grounding that I can switch the LED on and off and of course you can do that quickly which you can't do with the boost converter because if you watch the review on that I'll show you. If I switch the boost converter off and then back on again it has to go through that very slow voltage ramp up again 
so it's not suitable for rapid switching of the LED. But with the Shure Electronics driver in circuit, I can switch the LED on and off rapidly. Right, so did anything get hot? Boost converter, just mildly warm. Shure Electronics driver. Yeah, now that is quite warm on the underside. And last time it seemed to be this diode on the bottom right there, um, which I think is just a polarity protection diode, so it could be shorted out possibly, but this seems to be warm over quite a lot of the surface of that. I'm not sure that it's in any danger of blowing itself up. And the LED, well, that's really hot because a 50 watt LED is going to warm up this relatively small heatsink pretty quickly. So I'm going to bring in something new that's just turned up in the post. And that's this. It's a V9 and it's actually a heatsink and fan. And if I turn it over, you can see that it's a VGA cooler. So it's probably quite an old thing, but look at that nice flat surface. That's going to be perfect for the 50 watt LED. Here's the eBay listing for the VGA cooler and it was cheap, 99p. Now of course there was some postage because it's quite a big thing, £2.9p postage, but nevertheless for £3 and it, I think it's going to be uh, pretty good for LEDs. Let's see where we got it, Lakey X101. I think that's going to be uh, rather good. Now of course you don't expect uh, there to be holes perfectly placed for the LED and so these four inner holes I had to drill myself and then I decided to have a go at um, tapping. So I bought a little tap and tap wrench set and uh, there are the four holes and they line up now with the LED. So I'm just going to bolt that on. And this thing is a bit of a pig to mount. You've got some holes down at the bottom here but I think I'm going to sit it up like that. So I'm going to put a piece of cardboard or bent plastic into that groove. There's a groove that runs down the middle of these fins. So I'm going to wedge it into there. So just for the moment I've wedged that piece of plastic into a fan. So that now sits up like that and can draw air up from the inside and blow it out through these fins to keep the LED cool. Let's see how effective that's going to be. Now I need 12 volts for the fan, so what I've done is my incoming 12 volts I've put through a two-way splitter cable. One goes into the boost converter. I just hope that splitter can take the 5 amps or so that it's going to need to take. And the other one I've put into the fan. So that's it, it's all set up. Let's switch on the boost converter. So once again the voltage is coming up slowly, about 24 volts this thing should start to bright up. Ah, something's gone wrong. Well it seems like it didn't like the splitter cable so I've plugged my 12 volts back in directly and I've just connected the fan loosely into that input connector which is 12 volts and now it does appear to work. Once again, we've got to wait. So, that's working. I'm going to leave that on for a little while and just see how hot that heatsink gets. Well, that's been a couple of minutes, three perhaps, and everything seems fine so far. The fan's running quite slow because my batteries are struggling. Um, I can't see that, but... Uh, We've only got sort of 11-ish volts out there. I really must do something about those batteries. So I'll just leave it for a little bit longer. Let's just try the heat sink. The heat sink didn't seem to be getting warm at all. That, seemed, that heat sink seems perfectly capable of shifting 50 watts of power, which is pretty good for three quid, I think. And I've just worked out where all that fizzing noise is coming from. It's actually coming from this box, which is extraordinary. Just listen for a minute. It's just one of these cigar lighter adapter things. But I mean, it's only just wires in there. What on earth is making that fizzing noise? And now the LED is going, becoming unstable because I think the voltage is so low there. 
this box really isn't designed for the sort of high currents that I like to push through it now. So after, I don't know, five, six minutes, uh, the fan is not hot at all. So that seems perfectly capable of handling a 50 watt LED. Uh, might try 100 on watt on there at some point. The MBI 6651 double decker driver is warm, but not not worryingly so. Of course, the boost converter, just mildly warm. That's perfectly happy. But I need to sort out that box. That box is just not up to the job.